from Microbe TV. This is Q&A with A and V. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me tonight from Chevy Chase, Maryland, Amy Rosenfeld. Hello, Amy. Hello, Vincent. How are you today? Well, it's really weird because normally I do this at 8 p.m., but for me, it's 2 p.m. here, and it's light. So I don't know how that's going to affect the uh, feng shui, you know, because uh, I'm used to being in the basement in the dark, but we'll see. I'm coming to you I'm from... Clear. Uh, I'm not clear. I'm not clear what the negative is going to be. I don't understand. Okay, whatever. I just don't get it. Anyway, I'm coming to you from Hawaii, where I am at a immunology meeting. And, and we're going to do a podcast here on Friday. I wanted to show you the announcement for the special plenary session, live recording of Immune. We've got all the hosts here. We have Cindy, we have Steph, we have Brianne. That's an old picture of a young Vinny, very old. Yeah, but you're in the and you're in the great ballroom. It's like super honor. Like look, it guests. says yeah. grand ballroom. Yeah, so that yeah, should be fun. It's good. Yeah. It's good. This, this picture was taken in New Orleans many years ago by Chris Condian. And one more picture, folks. I guess some of you may be here, actually, on the Big Island, right? So why would they uh, be there? Last week, someone said uh, they were here. I said, "If you're in Kona, give me a shout out." And you said, "I'm here." Aloha, everyone. Okay. <laughs> aloha. Yeah. yeah, Richard says aloha. Principal manager says aloha. Vanity Nutrition's here's, here. Here's, uh, so I have taken the advantage of nice weather for walking. I do power walking in the in the morning. What do you think about power that, Amy? Walking. That's where you I walk. I think it's good. It's every everybody should have some exercise. So forty five minutes. And this is my Twiv World Tour twenty eighteen T shirt. Look at that beautiful, beautiful weather. And this is all ro lava rocks here. It's very cool. So and that's an NYU cap. Look at that. I don't even have a Columbia cap. I should have a um, Why do you need a Columbia cap? I should have a microbe TV hat, right? Yeah, anyway, I don't know why you would get a Columbia cap. I mean, it's not like you went to Columbia school. I'm not clear about the NYU cap. I mean, like, it would be well, one thing if you had a Cornell cap. You went to Cornell. I grabbed or if you the had hat. a CUNY Look, cap because you, had a, you went to CUNY. What is this? I just grab a hat out of some pile and put it in the suitcase randomly? Yeah, Don't yeah, even yeah. I needed pay attention? A hat. I needed a hat to, to shade my bald spot, right? So I grabbed it. I got that right, hat just at, put the, on some, just I got that hat at some the Science March. Do you remember the Science March? You were there, Amy. I do remember the Science March you that were there. you were the keynote speaker with. I came with my mom and my sister. sister. We we listened, we listened to Carol. Then we went to the yeah. thing. Then we all had pizza lunch. And my mom and sister went away, and then you and I finished pizza lunch. Yeah, I know all about the science march. So one of the other keynotes was Laurie Garrett. Yeah, the that. science march for sure. Anyway, anyway, I want to welcome everybody. Give us a thumbs up before we get going here. 235 people. That's so cool. And uh, I want to welcome our moderators. Let's see, who did I see tonight? I saw Vanity Nutrition. I saw Tom. Um, do we? I see Les. Did anybody see Steph? Let's see. I'm scrolling down here. Do we see Steph? I don't see Steph yet. All right, but the others are here. Maybe she's there screaming. Who knows, right? Welcome, everyone. Well, did you I, see uh, Frank? Did you see Frank? I, I didn't see Frank either. Maybe they'll pop in later. Um, Maybe. Anyway, I was going to say, you know, welcome to our Wednesday evening corner of virology on the internet, but it's not evening for me. It's 2.04 p.m. for me here, six hours behind. So it's always there. about where you is. So it's always dictated by where you is. We're four minutes in, folks, and Amy is uh, lancing into Vincent. That's a, why do you say that? That's not well, nice. Then people say, write to me and they say I'm mean to you. D don't do that. That's not nice. You're being mean to me. But why do you say You're it's all about you? You know it's not all about me. <laughs> it's not all about me at all. So therefore, anyway. it's still the evening corner of virology land. Okay, it's the evening corner of virology. I just happen to be out of sync with you guys. 
but anyway, I'm happy to to do this because next week I won't be able to do it in Seattle. It's just the the timing doesn't work. So I didn't want to go two weeks. So um, I got the room to myself. You can see I got a, I got a, as Amy says, a Fogo Gen behind me, right, Amy? Is that what you called it? Yeah, I call Fogo it the Fogo Gen. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Why? It's good. No, most people wouldn't even think I knew who Gauguin was. You can see the whole painting Gauguin. here. We got two ladies properly dressed uh, in a river, and Amy doesn't like these pillows. No, uh, I don't like them. I don't blame her. And I'm sitting near the window, so I got a little fill light. Richard Lund, I think I see, is here. Aloha. Now, I don't have any lighting because I'm not carrying lights with me. I had enough equipment because I, I have to do a pod with six people on Friday. It's a lot of equipment, video and audio, so no lights. I think it's not bad, right? Amy, what do you think? You're the expert. I'm not the expert. Richard's the expert. We shouldn't usurp Richard's expertise. All right, let's, he'll write let's, in and tell you. He's here. He said aloha. Richard's here. I know. He'll write in and he'll tell you if the lighting sucks or not. I don't well, need to do I, it nothing. It doesn't matter. This is a one-off. I'm never going to be here again streaming. Never. You can never say never. You can never, I was, I you kinda never bait, know. I kind of set you up, you know. I know. You How think you? I'm stupid? How are you, Amy, tonight? How's it going? Did you have a good day? I had a better day yesterday. Hmm. All right. Oh, Elena has a question for you. Can you update uh, us on your current research? Amy has gangbusters results. I have gangbuster results. Yeah. The, the binding yeah, of the monoclonal to the particle. It's very cool. Yeah. I have gangbuster results. And I walked around yesterday in DPV going, look at my structure. Look at my structure. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it? And then the flu guy was not that impressed. Why wasn't it's he like impressed? A, you know, he, that, it's not okay. his thing. And then somebody said to me, I should, because it's my very first structure from my lab, I should make a 3D printing of it. And I'm thinking maybe he's right when we finish. No, all the that'd tweaking. be cool. That'd be great. And then, yeah, I'm going to have a 3D printing of my monoclonal on my particle. All three particles. What do you think about so, that? So what Amy's doing in collaboration with Mike Strauss is to solve the structure of monoclonal antibodies bound to the particle, which is, you know, monoclonals that neutralize infectivity and see where they're binding on the capsid of this is poliovirus, but you're also going to do other enteroviruses, right? Yeah. What so do you think the, if I had do all three? I could make all three. I could 3D print all three of the first structure. Yeah, that would be cool. Out of my lap. Very cool. Amy, Amy's getting very excited. You know, she's got her own gig there. And uh, she's running the well, show. Sometimes it's a downer. Sometimes it's a downer. Welcome to management. Hello, Ian Lipkin. I don't nice do any management you. anymore. <laughs> I don't do any. I have no people to manage. <laughs> you eventually will. <laughs> yeah, I probably will. I have. I have David. I was yeah, and say, that's not true. You do have people. I have David have Renata. And Jeff Millard, who's your problem child. I don't manage the moderators. They don't need any managing. I wouldn't say that. They they do good things for us, so I'm not going to say that, that I manage them. They show up. So Richard you know. says, we can see you. As a man, you can handle wrinkles. Texture works. <laughs> Humans love rug roughness. Is he saying that I have wrinkles? Oh I don't my know God! What he's saying it. I don't know what he's saying. Anyway. You could discuss with him. All right. So, Amy, what is Q dot technology? It doesn't have anything to do with the COVID vaccines, right? No, it's a diagnostic tool. Quantum dots are particles that have a floor attached to them, and you right. can use them to use stain. It for to yeah, you'd use them for diagnostics. So you can use them for diagnostics or staining tissues. And the advantage of them, as I understand, is that the light that they emit is very focused, right? Because they're particular. Yeah. So you get a very bright signal. Yeah. But I don't know that it has anything to do with COVID vaccines, right? No, it doesn't have anything to do with okay. COVID vaccines. Uh, by the way, I'm in relatively crappy Wi-Fi here, 12 up and 12 down, 12 megabits per second up and down. It's not bad, right? It's actually wow. better than it is at home sometimes. Polio wow. Pete says some people are getting infected only four weeks after vaccination with the bivalent. Well, it's just coincidence. Yeah, I mean, it's, 
they, they should have a memory response by then, right, Amy? Amy, do, do vaccines prevent infection? No. So it's just coincidence. I bet they're not getting sick. Yeah, I would assume not. But I bet you it's just coincidence. Peter says, congrats for the interview with Kwame. I, I, I thought it was a marvelous interview. Um, he was really, even many people liked it. Amy even said she loved it. So Amy is, yes, you know, good is, interview. Uh, it's great. It's, it's extremely critical in a good way. So I enjoyed it. Um, this Sunday we will have Richard Knight, which I recorded in Manchester. Uh, That's going to be funny. To talk about prion diseases. Richard's a funny guy. And then the following week, we're going to have a guest, an infectious disease doctor from Stanford. He's going to talk about his experience treating COVID and long COVID, etc. I forgot his name. Do you remember his name? No. He was given to us by Jeff Millard. Anyway, glad yes. you liked it. And, and Rima sent, um, where's Rima's thingy here? Have you received my package? So I got a very lovely needlepoint from Rima, which you had made in Lebanon, which is Professor Rack in Yellow. I put it behind me. So if you look at the Kwaman interview, you will see it right behind me. It's in a place of honor, Rima. Thank you so much for that. Really That's appreciate lovely. It. Have you seen it, Amy, in the background? I don't watch the video sometimes. Okay. I, I I can't always watch the video. I listen to the podcast. And, and I'm busy really, lady, you know. I have I have gangbuster data to generate. No doubt. It does not allow you to watch television. There is no, no. television watching in the lab, Vincent. No doubt. Uh, Lisa, thanks <sighs> for us for Kwaman interview. Super... She immediately bought the book. Very good. Uh, many She's people seem to have gone out and bought it. Day. And he, I like the way he described his writing process. I thought that was the cool aspect of the interview. And the David Quonset Hut story. Remember that, Amy? Yes. Why don't you tell it in case people don't know it? Uh, so he was interviewed by um, the guy on CNN with the white hair. What's his name? Anderson, Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper. He, how do you not know who Gloria Vanderbilt's kid is? I mean, do I not teach you nothing? I know... <laughs> Other people with blonde hair, but not with white hair. I don't actually know them, but anyway. So he said, "Should we close uh, travel?" This is during the Ebola outbreak in 2015. Should Anderson said, "Should we close travel from Liberia because we don't want it coming in the U.S.?" And and David says, "No, you know, we established Liberia for as a consequence of slavery, so we should not shut it down." And then. The next day, apparently Rush Limbaugh got hold of this, and he said some David Quonset hut in Montana is saying Americans should infect themselves with Ebola because of slavery. <laughs> <laughs> so he said for 24 hours he was Rush Limbaugh's whipping post or whatever you call it. I love the I David Quonset hut. Yeah, I hope his book sold even more. Yeah, I do too. Um, oh, and this is very interesting. Dead, um, so here in New Jersey, the bucks are getting ready to jump out in front of our cars. So here on this island, they have goats. There's no deer, but there are goats wandering all over the lava flows. It's very interesting. Last night we were driving. Why do they, and why do they, go, why do they have goats? What do the goats do? They're wild goats. Oh. And last year they were, last night they were in front of our car eating the vegetation on the center aisle and they wouldn't move. We didn't know what to do. You drive like, around them. We couldn't. They were, they were covering the whole road. There was a mom, a dad, and a baby. They were whole road, you know. Oh, so what do you do, honk, and hope they move? Uh, we got close with the lights, and the mother looked at us and said, let's get out of here, and she turned around and took them all with her. Oh, okay. All right, this one is for Amy. Have you heard of HDL's role, high-density lipoproteins role in fighting infectious diseases? Trying to understand a lecture by Jay these last few nights, 2013. HDL. Cholesterol. 
Well, I don't know. Uh, I mean, triglycerides are used for membranes and stuff, but cholesterol is an antiviral. <clears throat> It is? Yeah. How does it work as an antiviral? How does it work? So it make, if you have too much cholesterol, then you can't bite off the membrane because like the membrane is to, I believe that that's right, that the membrane is to uh, stiff. It doesn't fold. But there's other ways that cholesterol, some of the byproducts or some of the metabolic components of cholesterol also used to generate energy and stuff. That's why statins are antivirals. So here's a paper from 2003, which says high cholesterol may protect against infections and atherosclerosis. And that's what Amy is just saying, right? Mm -hmm. But hyper, by high density lipoprotein is not cholesterol. It's a triglyceride. It has yeah. a different structure. Anyway, I don't know much about it, Patricia. I'd have to oh, Jenna's it. here too tonight. We'll look into it, Patricia. I think that's an interesting. Uh, for, for you guys who are doing the, the sticky notes, please make a note to look into HDL and uh, infectious diseases. Thanks very much. I don't have my shit, my, my field notes. It's across the, the room. I don't want to go, go up and get it. I think it's a good thing to look at. Uh, I'm trying to make sense of some of these comments. Where, where is that? It's disrupted. Oh, here we go. Je De Jeffrey says, Dr. Griffin spoke about the paper in Lancet. He said that for Paxlovid and vaccinated people, the number to treat was 1,000 to prevent one severely, one severe event. It appears that previous infection plus vaccine lowers the risk of severe disease by 50. That's something on the order of what he said, yes. Hello, Jan, good to see you. That's Jan T. Oh, nice, nice to see her. Um, 64 in DC, is that right, Amy? <sighs> yeah, I could tell you, hold a second, we gotta push the right button. 62 cloudy, going down to 54. Thursday, um, 46, not so hmm. good. Friday, 42, not so good. Sunday, 41, even more not so good. So uh, Les says that Kwame's show goes on my greatest hits reel. Interesting how to teach people that are smart but not specialists. Oh, by the way, Amy, I got an email from Carl Zimmer yesterday. Oh, what did he's, Carl Zimmer of the New York uh, Times have to say? <laughs> he said he's visiting New York, so he's going to come by the inter, the incubator in uh, November. That's great. You should do a pod. Should I do a pod with him? For sure. All right, because since do you're saying pod, that, I'll do it. The, do, show him the Ebola picture, talk about Microbe TV, the mission, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and Patricia wants a correction. Last week when I said I was more and more convinced that COVID is spread, SARS-CoV-2 is spread by close household contact, of course, did not mean that all close household contacts spread COVID easily. Okay, that's fine. All right, Polio Pete says, the flu vaccine is reformulated each year based only on animal studies. Uh, no, it's not true. It's not based only on animal studies. It is based on surveillance of the circulating strains in the opposite hemisphere and neutralization data from human serum. So it's not just based on animal studies. And then as we discussed last week, and Amy uh, verified this, we do a very small safety immunogenicity study in people, 10 to 20 people. But it's the same vaccine preparation that's been going on for 50 years and not, no need to make a new human trial every year. Right, Amy? Right. Has anyone read Faulkner, by the way? Because it's very depressing, right? It's all about the 
decline of the South. And I'm not sure decline of the South, dysfunctional families. I don't know how much you can take of that, no matter how good the writing is. I was going to buy Absalom, Absalom, but it, you read the excerpts, it's depressing as hell. Do you ever read uh, Faulkner, Amy? Yes. I tried to read The Bear. I think I got to page three, and then I had <laughs> to return it. It's like, I can't take this anymore. I mean, you got to know. I couldn't read, take it. This Amy it lady is very smart, so she couldn't. Yeah, it's too much, right? We know the human. It. We know the human I condition. I couldn't take it. I don't need to discuss. We all right, all right. We won't discuss. discuss. Sorry. Tom, hello, Tom. From the Oregon Coast Range, where we finally have enough rain, so fire danger is low, but not enough to bring the salmon to our creek to spawn. Well, I'll be in your neighboring state next week. I'll be in Seattle, Washington, for a couple of days, two nights. It's pretty I close. Guess, I guess I should bring a jacket, right, Amy? For sure. You need a jacket. Absolutely. We can tell you what it is in Seattle. Let me get the proper app here. Lisa already bought, bought, read, and gifted Breathless about to start Song of the Dodo. So, Song of the Dodo is very moving, especially the very last paragraph. You're going to cry. You're going to cry. It made me, well, I didn't cry. It made me emotional when you get that little feeling under your sternum, you know, a little fluttering feeling. Yeah, you're going to need big jacket. It's 43 at night and 53 in the daytime, and it's cloudy and got high chance of rain over 50 percent not so good bring an umbrella all right so many people want jeffrey's question answered i'm not sure what the question is the number to treat is 2000 to prevent one severe episode modified by risk i did not see a multivariant analysis neither did D daniel he asked for one I'm concerned that Paxlovid is not completely benign and treatment should be based on the number needed to treat to prevent one severe outcome. I, I, you treat people who are sick and at risk, Jeffrey. You don't treat people based on statistical calculations. And what are the non-benign consequences of Paxlovid? I, I'm, are you aware of any, Amy? Well, so the truth of the matter is, uh, are we talking about Paxlovid or are we talking about the other stinky drug that's there? I'm only the one that's no. in the eight. Yeah. We're no. Talking about Paxlovid. But, uh, but Paxlovid oh, is. Oh, sorry. Ritonavir. Is, yeah. Yeah. Ritonavir. Yeah. Oh, Ritonavir is the one that gives you the bad taste. It's a protease inhibitor. Yeah. Note, as, as Elizabeth said, no drug is completely benign. It's the same thing that Offit says. No biologic. Amy, as a member of the biologics department, no biologic is ever benign. It's completely benign, right? You're a biologic. You're definitely not benign. Oh, come on. What am I supposed to say to that? I'm being funny. Is that a TikTok My God. moment? I'm a My biologic and, Vin and Vinny is not benign. <laughs> um, but you have My to weigh the God. risk, right? You need to weigh I the do risk. Break risk so, <laughs> look at this say, my hair falls out i cut right and i still come here every wednesday night to spend two hours with you are you saying i make your hair fall out and turn gray no thank you but you have to weigh the honest. benefits and risks so if there's a minuscule side effect of a drug yet the alternative not to be treated and die of infection or get something from infection it's clear so come on folks don't lose sight of that and Paxlovid has helped many people, as Patricia says. I know many patients that swear by it to ease symptoms. Yes, you bet. Okie dokie. Yes, the calculus is the risk versus side effects. Exactly right. Um, I started reading The Chimp in the River, Waiting Breathless, Warning Faulkner, Faulkner, Absalom, Absalom has incredibly racist dialogue. It is accurate for the period it portrays, unfortunately. I, I just... Yeah, it's upsetting. No, I don't like that. Uh, this is funny. R Rima took his cat Luna to the vet wearing his TWIV shirt. So That's we spent cute. clinic time talking about TWIV. I got two spiked t-shirts. That's great. That's, That's just great. Fantastic. Uh, in anticipation of 
me hiring people to help me, um, what do you call it, to help me uh, do shows and stuff. I made a t-shirt. Want to see it, Amy? Yes, sir. Let's see. Here it is. It says Microbe TV cast member. Isn't that cool? Excellent. It's just is a it kind cast of a... or wait? Is it cast or crew member? No, cast, cast is... is like you and and Condit and Dixon. Crew member is like you and David. No, I don't want a distinction. They're all, we're all cast members. We're all okay. part of it. And so someone who's running the yeah, camera cool. at a show is a cast member. I stole it from okay. Disney because if you go to Disney World, all the people working there have cast member shirts, but they don't have microbe TV shirts. Okay. So I made two different well, ones. Well, that's because they're di they're Disney people. I made a big that's one cool. and a small one. Do you like it? Excellent. I think it's great. Vanity. Fantastic. What do you think, Vanity? Do you like? I think it's good. And they're on the website. I did website. not know that everybody at, at Disney World is a cast member. I have no, course, not been. At the moment. I've been have, only once. I have no, no one to wear these shirts, but hopefully that will change <laughs> at some well, point. Well, you got to put out an ad for, for yeah. a helper. And you need them to be not science oriented. You need them to know how to use the camera and to edit and to switch, do the switching and everything. Yeah. Amy, this is for you. Do we know how long contagious period of the common cold is? Which common cold? Uh, gee, Amy, is there more than one? Yeah, there's ad, there's rhino, there's coronas, there's stuff. They're all different. Common yeah. cold. All right, so let's do yeah. rhino, the most common common cold. How three long days. is it? Three days. So three days. When does shedding begin before symptoms? Yes. And then the symptoms continue beyond the shedding period, right? Yes. All right. And the others we don't know. Well, we do know, but we're not going to go into all of them. But uh, did you know, Amy, that rhino viruses? are the most common agents of the common cold? Yes, there's 200, there's 167 of them. Of course, they're the most common. Up to a year after they were infected with SARS-CoV-2, spike protein or nuclear capsule was present in the blood of 65% of long COVID patients tested. Why might this be happening? Well, first you have to ask if it's correct, Amy, right? Yeah, for sure. And Dan Diane Griffin, many years ago, Diane Griffin is a virologist at Johns Hopkins, had said RNA viruses, we think they're acute, but actually material RNA and protein persist for a long time. You know, it's not infectious virus, and we don't know why. And maybe that's what's happening here. Maybe there are places where viral particles are, are persisting and it's breaking down. Uh, I would not agree that it has anything to do with long COVID until I see more data. I mean, you know, you don't get answers to these questions in a couple of weeks, folks. It's not how science works. And this pandemic has really warped our expectations for how long it takes to figure things out. I think that Amy would agree with that. Yeah, for sure. So that's what, that's my take on that. Is our an, lack of annual exposure to viruses causing these surges or that's what the, the media keeps saying. My mom called up and asked. Surges of other viruses, right? Mm -hmm. It could be. So my mom called up and said, did I know? She said, Amy, do you know? And I said, what mom? What am I <laughs> supposed to know? She said, do you know that there's like four times as much RSV out there in the world and all these babies are hospitalized? I said, yes, mom, I'm aware. She said, do you know that they say it's because we haven't been exposed? And I said, yes, mom, I know. Then she said, <laughs> what about the old peoples? I said, what old people? She said, like me, old people. I said, okay, mom, what about you? She said, what about me and my viruses? I said, yeah, mom, you have viruses. Let's move on. 
life is like. So if this is correct, that it's uh, lack of annual exposure. Now that we're getting exposed, these surges are going to disappear. They're going to flatten out, right? Is that the yeah, idea? Amy? They'll flat. Yeah. Okay. It's going to take some time for them to flatten out. It's not going to be tomorrow, but yeah, they'll flatten out by next year. Why do some vaccines need adjuvants? Because the immunogen sucks. Yeah, they don't replicate. So if you have a virus uh, that replicates and kills cells, that stimulates inflammation because the dead and dying cells release viral particles, viral antigens, nucleic acids, which are sensed and stimulate the immune response and cause inflammation. And so you add adjuvants to, to non-replicating vaccines to mimic that. So you get inflammation. So why is inflammation needed for a good immune response? Because the cytokines that are produced as a consequence of inflammation are also involved in helping the B and the T cells to to mature. And so good inflammation. Amy doesn't basically like what I'm because yeah, because basically because your immune engine sucks. Because there's no adjuvant in IPV. I know, but if you say your immune engine sucks, people want to know why it sucks. Well, you know, I don't know why it sucks. I'm not always, I don't work on anything but enteros. And so, so I don't know why it sucks. It's not my field. I took a my page. My field is, 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 is enteros. I took a page from your book, okay? A reporter sent me this garbage preprint about looking at restriction cleavage sites in SARS-CoV-2 and concluding oh, yeah. it, it was likely made in the lab. Oh, what pure, <laughs> unadulterated BS. Crap. Yeah. So this reporter so said, just what do that. you think? And I said, it's pure, unadulterated crap. And she said, uh -huh. yes, but why is it pure, unadulterated? <laughs> <laughs> Which is a perfectly good question, right? It is a totally perfectly so, wait, good question. Right. So what did you say? I haven't answered it yet because that yeah. requires me to you know, pluck out some juicy tidbits and say, see, this is all wrong. Um, I, I might do it this evening. I'm not sure yet. Um, but that's what, that's like Amy saying, it's a crappy immunogen to the reporter. The reporter is going to come back and say, well, Amy, why is it a crappy immunogen? So you know, people want explanations. I totally get it. <laughs> Here's an interesting one from Frank. Do you think the time of day you get vaccinated has any effect on antibodies? You know, th there are things called circadian rhythms. You know about those, Amy? I do. And I they... know Mimi. I've heard Mimi talk. I've heard Mimi and Rod discuss. That's Mimi's last name. Because you know you're... You need to tell people who she is. You can't just be inside baseball, Amy. I don't know what Mimi's last name is. I just know her as Mimi. That's why I call her Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so me? it's an honest thing. So according to her last name, her last name here. is. But so wait a minute, I wasn't okay, done with so, my story. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Forget it now. I'm done. Forget it. Uh, come on, please, Amy, <laughs> tell us the story. <laughs> so, so you know, you're supposed to take medicines at night. Yeah. Because, and, and if for the rest and everything, but like Rod takes this medicine in the morning and Mimi was telling him, no, that's not right. Yeah. Because of the circadian rhythms, you have to take it at night. Rod said, no, it doesn't make any difference. And Mimi said, yes, it does. And then she did some work to show that it did. Morning is best for humans. Apparently morning is best for immune responses. I have to find out Mimi's name. Mimi Shirasu. He's a. Yeah, okay. Mimi. Here's Mimi. She's really good. I like Mimi. Here she is. Yeah, I'm not saying she's not good. We're going to um, share the screen so you can see Mimi. Give her a little, a little love. Where is the screen share? See, this is where I need my... Here she is. Mimi Shirasu Hiza. Yeah. Uh, get, get rid of the cookies thing. Come on. I didn't get rid of it. What do you think of this cookie stuff, Amy? Here it's annoying. Go. There she is. And that's her lab page. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mimi, let's turn off this thing. Get to the next question. So morning is best for humans, folks. Tom has a brother in Hilo. 
Yeah, we're thinking of going to Hilo. It's on the other side of the island. We're from where we're, we're on the western side. Hilo's on the eastern. It's very pretty out there. Um, I'm not sure we're going to go. Well, what's there? What do you do? Is there the volcano there? I don't know. I, I, I'm Where's the sure. volcano? I, might, I think it's over there on that side, but I'm not I sure. I thought you got $7 Lavo Volcano walking shoes. When are you going to use these shoes? I got them on right now. They're Eddie Bauer walking shoes. $7 at BJ's. They're not bad, actually. Okay. New Zealand is in the Pacific. You're not far. Uh, you're probably 18 hours from me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So th this week we had World Polio Day, right, Amy? Yeah, October 24th, World Polio Day, Monday. Should this be one's, doing something productive. This is for Amy. How many sequences are taken when shotgun sequencing is during the process of finding a new virus? You have to have a minimum of, usually they say you need a minimum of a thousand reads. But when you do the whole thing, you get millions. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, this we're is, doing it. This is good paper. New hybrid virus, the flu, flu virus and respiratory since you can fuse to create a virus that can evade the human immune system. That's a good paper. Um, Amy yes, I know. I me. sent it. I will. I think we'll do it on an upcoming TWIV. The, the thing now we're having a problem with on TWIV is that we have a lot of guests, so there's not much time for paper discussion. But I assume everyone wants a mix of guests and papers, right? So, well, I guess then maybe you need to go back to three a week. I'm never going to get people to do two, three a week again. I mean, now and then we can do it. I mean, for example, I have a Jeff Taubenberger episode in the can, which is really, which is really good. And I have, I'm going to have to do a midweek release. Otherwise it's not coming out this year because it's the, the schedule is full. I guess it's a good problem to have, right, Amy? Yeah. I'm not clear what the complaint is. When is the next Lori Garrett episode? What's it about? Well, did you email her? I didn't email her. I'm just trying to. Think of a pitch, okay? Okay. But I will email her. No, uh, no problem. I'm gonna. Yeah, I want to do it. I'm gonna email Tony Fauci. I got it all written down in my field notes. Okay. Which are across the room. You want me to get them? No. Because then you can see the foe go again better if I go get them. It's okay. I see. That I've saw. I've seen the folk go gone for a while now. I'm kind of over it. Not many people would have said, "Hey, Vinny, why are you sitting behind a folk go gone?" Go you again. Know. Go again. Whatever. I know who he is. I show you the pillow that Amy. These are all pillows that are in the hotel, right? Amy hates this pillow. <laughs> I do. It's, just, <laughs> it's a bit. I it's sure. A bit, uh, I sure. So just to let you folks know, to oh. get my laptop at eye level they have a little table here like a, a side table where you that you'd have at the end of the couch and i got an ice bucket and put it on so my laptop sitting on the ice bucket and that puts it at the perfect height <laughs> an ice bucket of course it's empty what do you make of dr walensky getting covid infection only a month after getting the new booster coincidence <sighs> Yeah, I, I'm not sure what it means anything, right? And it was no, probably it's just coincidence. No, but if a month after the booster, she should have relatively high antibodies, right? I don't know. So it, maybe she doesn't. I don't know. And she may not have responded. Maybe or it could maybe, be that yeah. whatever she got, whatever Omicron subvariant she got, is just not neutralized by the antibodies. So she got an infection, but she still has good T cells, so she didn't get sick. And I don't know what more we want. Well, the truth of the matter is, is even if you had a good immune response, you still got infected. It just wouldn't replicate at, yeah. uh, as high titers. Yeah. So I don't, so what, I'm not clear why we're doing all this testing. Can we progress onwards? Tom was at the science march. <sighs> so there He's, were two. There was this, the Washington march, which I went to. No, and, I did not go. That was raining. I and don't then do there was, uh, 
then there was the New York Science March, which is where I got the NYU hat because they ran it. Yeah. NYU. So Eric is doing is in charge of the retreat I'm going to in two weeks. Oh, cool. Very cool. I hope is you enjoy it, Amy. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, what causes the body to stop producing the spike protein once the instructions for making it have been introduced to the body in the mRNA vaccine? The instructions go away. Yeah, the instructions go away. Yep. It doesn't last forever. They degrade. There's a system in our cells for degrading RNAs because you don't want them to stay around forever the RNA degradation machinery. It takes hold of it and chops it up, and that's the end of it. Aloha, mRNA. That's a nice appropriation of my environment, don't you think, Amy? Yeah. I think it's good. Um, and there's another word that I learned. It's mahalo. mahalo. What does that mean? Thank, it's thank like you. Thank you, right? It's like, uh, thank I don't you know. For... I don't know. I've never been to Hawaii. I don't know. Thank you for your support. So I, a big mahalo to all of you here tonight for coming and joining with us to talk about viruses. Aloha. Mahalo. Okay, uh, question. Double vaccinated. Boosted once. Had COVID once. Do I need another booster? No. What do you think, Amy? No. Now, just you look pretty young there. You look pretty healthy. In fact, Amy and I have been double vaccinated and boosted once. We never had COVID, and we're not getting a booster. And neither of us is elderly, elderly. So that's why. Okay. Don't be mean to Dixon. What, oh, you mean in Seattle? I could be so mean to Dixon. Why? I told, I told Dixon, find someone on the program that you want to interview. Do you think he did it? No. So fortunately, I copied everyone on the email and Christina did it. Good for her, Christina. Is she said, coming too? She's coming. I said, find someone. She found someone she liked. I said, okay, email her. I delegated. I didn't, usually I would grab it and take the email myself. I said, you know, Christina could handle it. And she did it. It's great. Okay, so what's this, what is the topic? I don't know if the woman. What about all these molds? What about all these molds? The rise in molds that the rise in molds that the WHO just announced that is that is troublesome. It's been happening for many years. Well, I understand that, but the WHO now made an announcement about it, so it doesn't matter that it's been happening. (laughs) So maybe we should talk about it at uh, Twim, right? Twim. Matt says, it's welcome Twim to the Big Par- Island. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Are you here on the Big Island? It's very nice here. The weather is amazing. It's beautiful. Although I, I hear the rainy season's coming up. Um, I, I, I did go snorkeling yesterday. It was quite amazing. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Bob's snorkel something or other. It's very nice. Bob's wife is from Wayne, New Jersey. <laughs> Can Bob send us any fish? You can buy fish in New York. Go to the Fulton Fish Market. Oh, you're not in New York anymore. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm kind of rubbing in, right? <laughs> not gonna. I'm not gonna go down that route. Your voice sounds like your throat hurts. No, my my throat is good. I don't have any issue. I have a naturally gravelly voice. Actually, no, I don't even have a gravelly voice. No. Speaking of um, uh, fungi, here's Rob. Thank you, Rob, for your support. Support wind-powered virus testing for population health. Wind-powered, huh? But, Rob, what are you going to do? You're going to find a lot of viruses floating around. What are you going to do? Um, Amy and Vincent are like me and my mentor. Uh, Amy wouldn't like you to say I'm her mentor. She's flown the coop. It's fine. It's fine. You can be my mentor. It's fine. I didn't give the temperature. Let me get it for you. It is in Kamuela. 
it's third, 29 Celsius, which is 83-ish, I guess, 29 Celsius. And is it humid? No, it's not very humid, no. Let me see if they have the humidity here. Why doesn't the stinking thing have humidity? You got everything out of 61%. How's that? Is that good? My daughter, whose professor recommended Twiv to her class, got extra credit for watching. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> uh, they should watch this show, right, Amy? They won't learn that much. No, it's not this week in Vincent. No, Amy does not like that. It's not about me. I know. I'm fine no. with it. No, it's virology. I'm, it. I'm happy to be a facilitator. Uh, but I have a lot of people behind the scenes. No, they're not behind the scenes. They're in front of the scenes. They're my co-hosts, right? Couldn't do it without them. Took grandma for bivalent vaccine number four. After your question, you answered my question three weeks ago. She's fine. I'm really glad now seeing news of increasing infection. Good. I'm glad you're feeling better about that. And your grandma is fine. That's great. I am recommending... Twiv for the big kids I train. Good. We like to uh, uh, have everyone learn about viruses. Okay, any plans to eat poi, poke, poo poo platter? No, I haven't. Well, uh, poo poo platter is actually like from Trader Vic's. It's not really a whole, I don't think, if it's the kind of poo-poo platter I think of, then I'm not sure that it's a real thing in Hawaii because it was a Trader Vic's thing from the 50s. He kind of made it up. I've been you know who Trader fish. Vic's was? No, who's well, Trader Well, Poi, you never went to the Polynesian poo-poo platter place in the plaza? No. That was all, and got in a big umbrella drink? Nope. They did not do these things. No, I didn't do it, but just tell me what it is. I just told you. It's famous Polynesian restaurant that was in the plaza in L.A. And all the people like Liz Taylor and Cary Grant and all these people were seen. And he used to have bamboo bridges and everything. And you got poo-poo platters of crap or gone and stuff. And then you got the umbrella drink, the Mai Tai, the pina colada, the blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. So I've been eating fish because I can't handle. Well, pokey is fish. Eating me, but I've been eating like pieces. Like I had a tuna the other night, which was really good. And on the menu was swordfish. And I said to the waitress, how can you eat swordfish? It's such a beautiful fish. And she said, well, I eat cows myself. And I said, well, how can you eat cows? Because of the way they kill And she didn't. I said, it's all tofu for me from now on. And she walked away. Did Darius hate you? No, but, but kombucha is the local farmed fish, okay? It's supposed to be low ecological impact fish. So I had that last night. It was quite good, actually. But fish is all I'm going to eat. What did they, they do with it? It was cooked. It was cooked. <sighs> there were two pieces. You know, you know how they make one lay up on top of the other, make it look yeah. good? So was it pan seared? Was it grilled? Was it was it breaded? Was it in lemon butter? No, no, it wasn't. Butter? wasn't, was wasn't it, breaded. Was it, was it with? Yeah, okay. I don't know, but it had a nice sauce, and I, I, was, I said no, not too much salt because people put too much salt on food. Uh, I like this comment by Richard, so I'm going to highlight it. As a man, you can handle wrinkles. Texture works. Humans love roughness. So this is very yes. interesting, Richard. Because I view myself, I'm not a rough person, but I got rough features, right? And I'm not sure that yeah, my teeth are not even. I got wrinkles on my forehead. I'm not sure that's so. But you saying it's good, I like that. Okay, I'll move on, Amy. Just just chill. Just chill. Give me my little minutes here. You can have as many of them as you want. Call me when you're done. <laughs> Matt says, my folks are 91 and 85. Never got the fourth shot. Haven't got the bivalent. Any good evidence that someone with supposedly less responsive immune system would benefit from more spike exposure by vaccination? So, no, there isn't. And Paul Offit says, instead of getting boosted every year, just 
be prepared if you test positive to get Paxlovid or a monoclonal. Have a plan. Have a plan. Okay. So make sure you, you're okay with their doctors because some doctors don't want to give Paxlovid, which is absurd. But just um, be ready because if they test positive, you don't want to wait because you don't know what's going to happen. Give them Paxlovid, okay? I read that BA1 can evade immunity from vaccination, natural infection. So it sounds like we are no longer protected and have to get the bivent. No, you are protected against disease, severe disease and death. You are protected unless you are elderly, elderly, 75 and older, in which case you have a problem making memory cells. So you could get boosted. But as I just said, Paxlovid is going to be better. It's a better solution. <laughs> so okay with you, Amy? Yeah. Uh, Questella, you were here at the beginning. There were no mods. That's right. Well, is that true? No, I think it's yeah, pretty much. But then we got mods right away. People said, "You guys, are, <laughs> it's very sad what's happening to your stream. You need <laughs> moderators." <laughs> Do you remember? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank I you. Do. And Questella, you said we were going to hit a hundred thousand subs. Um, thank you for, for your uh, confidence in it. I really appreciate it. And all of you as well who are still here. It's great. Uh, Sabiza Bulin, the dual antiviral anti-inflammatory. What is the status? Do you know anything about Sabiza Bulin, Amy? What's going on with it? No, no it's just a microtubule inhibitor. It takes, I don't know if phase threes are done. Do you know, Amy? I don't know. But it takes a long time for these things to wind their way through the labyrinth that's the FDA because people have to read all this stuff, you know. People do read the results and digest them. It takes a long time. They, they don't do a Twitter fake out and say, oh, this looks good. Let's license it. Right, Amy? Right. Mm-hmm. Is Rach from the Isle of Man just tested negative first time in a week? So, uh, Rach, I remember last week you were concerned because you can't get Paxlovid there, you can't get monoclonals, and it sounds like you did well. So good for you. And I don't know anything about John C. And I wouldn't look at any of them because it's a waste of my time. Sorry, but if you want to post your thoughts here, that would be fine. If a vaccines don't prevent infection, how does a vaccinated person protect an unvaccinated person? Amy, can you handle that? You shed, you shed very little. Yeah, the, the shedding not is enough probably to start an infection. No, Patricia, no, don't skip it. Why would you do that? It's really interesting. Okay, you can skip it if you want. But you have to understand that it's really interesting. And it's, Richard Knight is a very knowledgeable guy. So there is a pro drug of remdesivir that's orally available. But it's not licensed yet. So I don't know what the status is. We did the paper on TWIV a long time ago. It's quite a good, uh, uh, quite a good drug, but I don't know where it is in the, in the, process. Do you, Amy? No. Amy doesn't handle uh, antivirals. She just deals with certain vaccines, antivirus vaccines, right? Of which there's just a polio vaccine, right? The only antivirus so. vaccines licensed in the U.S. are for polio viruses, right? Yeah. There is one other antivirus vaccine in the world, right? 71. The Chinese yeah. vaccine? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, but it's not so good. It doesn't protect against every genotype. Right. It's not so cross. Tom says it's not Q, pan. Q dots. I used to work with them in biotech. Intrinsically fluorescent, very bright, good stoke shift, but I could go on and on about issues. <laughs> okay, thanks, Tom. I love it. It's great. <laughs> 
Uh, my husband has COVID nine days already, vaccinated with one booster, got an allergy to Paxlovid. He's the only one on the planet with an allergy to Paxlovid, full body rash. I'm sorry about that. Hope it, hope it, hope he's okay. But he's probably not the only person on the planet, I'd guess. You know, I would guess there are probably. How do I know he was? He got it. He's allergic to Paxlovid and not the other thing. Yeah, that too. Just because it happens at the same time doesn't mean it's the causing, right? Right. It's got by association. Why would Pfizer and Moderna add the ancestral strain to the bivalent? So I answered this last week and Amy didn't like my answer. So can you answer it, Amy? No. I could answer it again. Okay, go ahead. Because the ancestral has been tested and it works against Omicron. And I don't think they want to throw it out. That's my feeling. But I do think that uh, Buffett was a little confused of that as well. Uh, uh, so Patricia saw Rima's needlepoint. It's the Shelf of Honor. Oh, that's a good name for it. The Shelf of Honor at the incubator. Have, I have limited space there, Amy, you know. Well, we'll have to rotate things. That's a great idea. You always come up with good ideas. You should, like, be a scientist or something. I think it's something. <laughs> you know, I'm joking. I'm trying to cheer you up. I know. That's why I said I think I'm going to be a something. What are you thinking? I, 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 I'm not so funny. I'm very oh, funny. Brian's going to be at ASTMH. Cool. Come by. Please, we have a booth on the exhibit floor. Uh, do you have a, a do you have the thingy? Do you know what court like it, what day it's going to be there and where on the exhibit floor and yeah, but I don't, I don't want to check my email for it right now. But okay, I'll be there Wednesday only. It, 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 so parasites without borders, microbe TV. We're going to have a joint booth on the floor. We're going to do two podcasts from it right in the booth. We're going to have pamphlets. We're going to have cards. So me, Daniel Dixon, and Christina Naula are going to be there and uh, some other people. So, yeah, stop by, Brian. Love to see you. And anyone else who's going to the meeting should be cool. Sounds cool. <laughs> Dominique. I presented my project on polio today in my micro class. It went well. Thanks for all the great information. Great. Great. Very good, Dominique. Love it. Salvatore Cucinotta. Buongiorno. I bought Kwame's book. It rem I love that. It reminds me of A Shot to Save the World. Yeah, we, we had that author on as well. Different perspectives. Yes. Here's Animal Party. Hello. Animal yeah, Party. I saw Welcome Jen to here. Welcome to the thing. We talk about immunosenescence. Is there any science on about when that happens? Have they quantified it? Since when have they done a senior flu shot? All right. So yes, there's a lot of work on immunosenescence. Um, you know, it's an insidious process. It probably starts in your 40s and then slowly ramps up 50s and 60s as you lose bone marrow. You lose the ability to make new memory cells and so forth. So it's well studied. And I do not know the details, but um, there's a lot on it. And have they done, well, since when have they done a senior flu shot? Do you know, Amy, how long it's been? It's probably at least five years. Maybe somebody here remembers. I've been getting it for at least five years. It's not, it's not ancient, okay? It's relatively recent. Polio Pete says, aside from neutralizing antibodies for a few weeks, do you also get immunological memory enhancement with bivalent boosters? I don't know yet. Yeah, we don't know. But these studies are probably in progress, but uh, I haven't seen them yet. You know when I know they're done when Amy texts them to me. Right, Amy? <laughs> Pretty much. Here's, here's what Amy does. In the morning, apparently, she's told me this. She, she makes herself a pot of coffee, cup of whatever. 
sits down. I have my the, two cups of coffee that are the size. My, you know, my super large coffee cup. It's like the size of my hat. I have two of them. I, she sits at a computer I, and starts I to read. read the literature, and then she sh shoots off texts to me and Daniel. This paper, that paper. So one for Daniel's program, one for Twiv. It's a very nice lady. You guys should not pick up. Then I complain, and then I complain about things that are wrong. Yeah, but the problem is, guys, so if Amy sends you a paper and then two days later you haven't read it, she can she get mad at you. No, I don't want you to have to read the whole paper. I just want you to acknowledge that that you saw it, like my beautiful structure. No acknowledgement of my beautiful structure. I worked hard to generate those data. Gangbuster data. I worked hard have, to generate. We have, we have good reason. And it's gorgeous. We have good reason that we don't acknowledge things. You know, when I'm running around airport, train station, airport, train station. You weren't at the airport today. You weren't at the airport yesterday. This morning I went to the set, to the opening session. Yeah, but it was yesterday. And you're six hours behind. So if I got the structure at 2 p.m., it was in your text box at 6 a.m. What were you doing at 6 a.m., Snickums? No comment. <laughs> is there a vaccine no, there's for no RSV? RSV vaccine? Yeah, but they are being worked on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Did I want to say you were asleep? Ed? I wasn't sleeping. I get up around five here because my clock is all screwed up. Yeah. And the, co the the coffee pot here is so horrible. But you brought oh. your own coffee. Yeah, but the coffee pot that the hotel supplies is horrible. Anyway, I'm not going to so complain about that. So where do you that. get where do you get coffee? I make it here. I drink horrible coffee. Oh. A Amy, statins are said to have anti-inflammatory benefit in second phase COVID. It's I've I've heard that. Yes. Could I be, mean, but that's not the original work. The original work was on influenza by somebody. I want to say then followed up with by Michael Karen at UCLA. And uh, then Ira Tapas also threw his name into it. I see CDC is looking at NOPV. Is that one, two, yeah. and three, Amy? No, it's just two. So let me get this straight. Are they going to license NOPV2 in the U.S., or is it already licensed? I don't think it is. It's not right? licensed. There's no, no, there's no IND for it. There's no nothing. I don't, I cannot talk about it. But it's public knowledge, right? That they're looking at it. Yeah. So Janelle Roth uh, came out and told CNBC or NBC News in New York that the CDC was now considering it. And then uh, I told Koistia and I got a comment back that I'm not supposed to repeat because it's not nice. Okay. And so so then, Amy, why would, why would the U.S. be considering NOPV? We use IPV, right? Doesn't stop outbreaks because they're confused, just like certain peoples. Like me, you're here. saying uh, you're saying I'm confused. Sometimes, yes, he was confused. Amy, I'm 69 years old. I've been working on polio for 40 years. How could I, I know? Be but confused? you keep repeating that OPV stops transmission, and it does. First three months, it's the it same. Does. But it's the same argument that you have for COVID when the antibodies are super high, everything stops. But then it go the antibodies crash and you get transmission, so it doesn't stop transmission. But in the first few months, OPV will stop transmission, just like any other vaccine. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I no got special. it. Special. Okay, it's not good. special. So I'm not really wrong. Not really wrong, right? Well, you don't really ex you, like if I said if I said the Moderna mRNA vaccine stop transmission of. COVID, of SARS-CoV-2, you would bite my head off. I'm not, I don't do that. I'm, I'm calm and Yes, collected. you do. Okay, fine. <laughs> Nonetheless. Let's move on. So let me, let me get this straight. So if NOPV2 is licensed, then they would go, and say, into areas where there's virus, poliovirus in wastewater and immunize everybody. That means they're going to do surveillance, doesn't it, Amy? 
Okay, Amy can't say anything. She's conflicted. Okay, so, no problem. <laughs> so these are all questions that I have brought up and I have not heard back yet. Okay. We dis hey. I discussed it already. Okay. And my, and Christia then was late to the meeting. And so a meeting that was like supposed to be a half hour was like two hours. And he said, like, he was there at like 127. And then at 142, he said surveillance and stuff. So, yeah. Don't you hate it when a half hour meeting goes to two hours? That sucks. Yeah, it screwed up all my experiments. Then I had to come home. I had to do the twift. Then I had to come home. This thing. Yeah, it was. This, it, yeah, I had to come home. Sorry, I'm sorry. Or maybe it was the day that I did something else. I forgot. Uh, my post-COVID symptoms consist of post-nasal drip, mucus in nose, and now a salty throat. Should I worry? No, those seem like relatively benign. Well, considering symptoms. the fact that I have chronic post-nasal nasal drip and mucus in my nose all the time, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to get rid of the gook in the air, I think it's fine. I don't think everybody has post-nasal drip. Not everybody has post-nasal drip, but everybody has mucus in their nose. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. Maybe, he has, well, the maybe, he mean, maybe he means more than normal. Okay. You could give him a I'm break. I'm sure it'll die down. I'm sure it will die down. They'd say you should go have Kona coffee. Yeah, Kona coffee is very good. It's not the coffee that's the issue. It's the coffee pot. But yeah, I could go somewhere and have Kona coffee, yeah. In fact, the, the so last time we're, the we were Kona, here, we went to the Kona plantation. It was good, yeah. Did you buy coffee? Bought coffee, brought it home, drank it. Yeah, it's good. It's very good coffee. Is it possible if someone's infected with two viruses, corona and flu at the same time, they could cause a cell to produce a hybrid virus? Yeah, you could make a no. pseudotype, right? A spike of uh, HA on a coronavirus? No? Why not? They're not similar enough. You're able to do it from me, from from flu and RSV because they're more similar. They're negative stranded. The envelope proteins are more similar. HA. Hmm. It's more similar. What is the HA in Corona? It's also po opposite polarity. Well, it's just, just a spike. They're trimeric protein so it... yeah but ha has uh, ha has certain f it, it's not just that it's trimeric protein it has a certain shape so lots of things are trimeric um, proteins they're not that's not so, that's not, so not the way right i look now. at it also is that everybody's co-infected all the time and we never see any hybrid viruses so they're extremely rare if they're happening and if they're happening they're not very fit because they don't propagate is that a fair enough conclusion, Dr. Rosenfeld? Well, it depends on what we're making the hybrid of. Some of them um, are you're co-infected with, but the season is out of sorts, right? You don't mm -hmm. get a polio, uh, you know, rhino chimera because it's out of sorts and it's different tropism, right? Yeah. So you're infected with tons of crap. Why no CMV vaccine? Not enough, not enough death and severe disease. Oh, but people who get immunosuppressed get really big problems. And I think people are working on CMV it's probably vaccines. Like a her it's probably like a herpes thing. It's because it's very difficult. It is we a herpes don't, uh, We don't actually know what the right antigen would be, right, Amy? Amy would say they're crappy antigens. What's your phrase for that? They're crappy antigens. We don't know which one to be. Plus, there's like 600 envelope proteins, right? Well, maybe GD, six. Yeah. GE, GL, G something or other, you know. Then you, what about, would you make them against the tegument proteins, which are all the ICP zeros and fours and eights and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so it's hard. We don't know what to do. So Good what question, are you going to make it out of? I don't know. I don't work on it, so I don't think about it. But you're right. I think those are the issues. Yep. By the way, I wanted to show you my room key. Okay, let's look at the room key. It's the bracelet? Yeah, it's got a little thing in here, and you just put it up against the door. Cause, That's cool. Yeah, 
They don't want people losing their cards. Is that why you're not? Wi- that's why you're not wearing your watch. No, I wore my watch to the meeting and I took it off and I put this on so I wouldn't lock myself out of the room because there's nobody here. Ah, very good. How long will somatic hypermutation protect against variants? Okay, so. I don't really understand the question. So you get vaccinated twice and boosted. You undergo somatic hypermutation and you make a lot of antibodies that will neutralize variants. So how long will they protect? They, it depends whether you get new variants that evade those antibodies. But my feeling is that even if you get infected and the antibodies don't work, you still have the T cells that are there and they protect you against severe disease. So it, it doesn't really matter. And, you know, the extent of, ev- there's going to be some cross neutralization, as Amy will tell you. And that may be enough to keep titers down so you don't get severe disease. Uh, so I don't know that we have an answer, except that it depends on the next variant that arises. And as you know, they're coming pretty quickly. Really? Because Omicron's been here for like a year. Yeah, but there are a lot of subvariants emerging all the time, right? It hasn't gone to the next letter, I agree, but there are a lot of Omicron subvariants which continue to evade neutralization. Wouldn't you agree to that? You send me papers that say that all the time, Dr. Amy. Yeah, I know. I, I know what I sent. Yeah. You know, we, you know what? You should have your own show and call it the Dr. Amy show. I don't want my own show. Too time consuming. And you could then, <laughs> at the end, you could talk about viruses for, say, 15 minutes. And then at the end, you could pull out a shoe and say, our shoe of the day is this. And that's it. Goodbye. See you next week. Is somebody going to restock my shoe collection? Well, you, you could know, get a deal. I, stopped, and have... I could get a deal. My my shoes is very expensive. Okay. It's not twenty nine ninety five at the local tra- BJ's, you know. Although I do have to say, I do live at the next to the local Saks, but you know what? Can you believe this? I've not been. So Michael said, "How do I understand the bivalent vaccine news?" I'm scared. Don't be scared. You're going to be protected against severe disease and death. You're not going to get it in the hospital. You can get infected. You might get sniffles. You might get fever. You might get body aches. But you'll be okay, especially if you're older. Take Paxlovid. Don't be scared. Amy and I are not scared of viruses. Hey, I'm not anyway. senior. I'm not senior senior citizen here. Well, neither am I. I'm I'm just a moderately senior citizen. Yeah, well, I don't know that I'm a moderately senior citizen, but okay. No, the the news is that some of the variants are evading bivalent vaccine-induced antibody neutralization. But got T cells, you're fine. Got T cells, you're going to be fine. The problem is the press over exaggerates everything, right? Because they don't know how to interpret the nuance. That's why you come here. Well, that's not. They don't need to interpret the nuance. If they interpret the nuance, they'd be broke. (laughs) <laughs> why would they be broke by oh like us because we're nobody's broke. <laughs> gonna watch them and then their advertising will oh, decrease sorry. and they wouldn't and and they couldn't sell their time you know like that's why so they sell like super bowl commercials like years in advance and they're like like millions of dollars for like 30 seconds and stuff and you know sometimes it doesn't work out so well when the game is sucky and people don't and they don't have like such as big an audience as they wanted it sometimes mm-hmm. doesn't work out so well. Although I do have to say, most of the time you're only watching for the commercials because the game is so sucky. Um, chilly now in Seattle. Bring your cashmere. Yeah, I you. said it was cold. I don't have any cashmere. You're not going to Seattle. Do I have cashmere that I'm not aware of? Yeah, you have some cashmere sweaters. I didn't know that. I have to go dig it in my closet to find them. I'm not yeah. really a. Uh, You're not really a sweater guy. That's sweater guy. Problem. No, I like to have the shirts, you know, speak for themselves. This is my signature button down collared shirts rolled up. No, I thought we were going. Rolled I up. thought we were going. I thought we were doing something new. 
I am experiment. I'm talking to Amy about trying a new look. Yeah. We'll see. Don't don't tell them, Amy. We'll just surprise them one Wednesday night, okay? And then they'll laugh me out of here. That'll be the end of it. I'll go back to button downs. They're not going to laugh at you. God almighty. <laughs> Nobody pays me enough for this abuse. Can you give more comments, explanation, on why you think the viral reservoir theory for long COVID is likely wrong? I would say I there's no evidence, very little evidence to support it. So if I said likely wrong, it's not... I shouldn't have said that. I don't have, I don't see evidence because where's the infectious virus? If you think it's there and that's what's causing long COVID, then show but, it to but, but the thing is, is we have a reservoir of HIV and it's not making, it's a latent reservoir that's not making any infectious virus, but it could reactivate to make infectious virus. What does that have to do with COVID, long COVID? So, so in your argument then is that you don't see any infectious virus. But so a reservoir could be latent and then reactivate, but you're not cultivating, but during the long COVID, you're not, you can't find any infectious virus. When you're diagnosed yeah, with long right. COVID at nine months, yeah, you know. can't find any infectious virus. But it's not, it. it's not yeah. just because you're producing infectious virus. It's because right. you can stimulate cells with like when you take HIV, you can stimulate cells to get the latent reservoir to make envir- virus, right? Mm-hmm. But you can't stimulate any cell to make new vi- new SARS-CoV-2 virus. So uh, Jody, Judy, you know, the previous question, I just want to see the evidence. I, I don't, this pandemic has been characterized by conclusions being made in the absence of evidence. And that's what we're trying to dispel here on this program, on TWIV and so forth. Wait till you have the evidence. It's going to take time. It may take a long time, but the press doesn't like it. They want an answer as soon as the preprint comes out. Not happening. Uh, Judy says to try Faulkner's light in August. That's good. Okay. I don't have my thing here. It's time I'll remember. Light in August. Okay. Mm. (laughs) You're going to read the cliff notes? Of Faulkner's novels, yeah, they don't have all the nastiness away, right? The, yeah, so never, Vanity likes I've never the, team, used Cliff Notes. the team T-shirts. I really like this yeah, cast member. I think it's great. Yeah, and if you want to sure. be a cast, two, one with a pocket label, and and I think the idea of having a cast of people working together is really cool. I'm sorry, Disney, for stealing it. We're not making money. Um, but although when I go to to buy it. Maybe they'll say, you can't buy this. You know, I had a t-shirt with Daniel's likeness on it. He kind of looked like James Bond and mm-hmm. they wouldn't let me sell the shirt because they said it was a violation of copyright to have Daniel okay. Griffin look like James Bond. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there are plenty of microbes at Disneyland. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. The incubator needs a green room. You have a green room. Uh, a green room is where you go before you come on, right? Right. You have a conference table and a little. Yeah, we, we sort of have a green li- room. Yeah. You a little library, and you have a kitchen where you can give them food and drink. You just need the slutty waitress. Huh? Nothing. Never mind. It went over my head. Sorry. It's okay. it's okay. uh, how about a T-shirt with Mickey Mouse saying, I lie, but Curious George exists. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> That's really good. Now then uh, they would really find you for infringement, copyright infringement. I, hey, Renzo, how are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. I noticed you were mentioned on page 35 of the book by Kyle Harper, Plagues Upon the Earth, Disease in the Course of Human History. Really? What does he say? I don't know why I'd be in that book. What, tell me what he says, Renzo. Hmm. Beyond the first class information, I really enjoy the kibitzing with A and B. Am I kibitzing with you or something? Kibitzing, kibitzing. Kibitz is in the house on a like, commune. <laughs> We're kibitzing. I thought so. I thought it was. I was mixing stuff up. 
Kibitzing. I don't what understand. Kibitzing is like. Where does it come from? Like gabbing. A lot of right. aimless gabbing. What I don't understand is mm-hmm. you've lived with two Jews for 50 years. I don't get how you didn't pick anything up. I just don't understand. You mean you and Silverstein? <laughs> well, Baltimore, Silverstone, Rod, Rod me. I just don't understand. It doesn't, it doesn't stick, Amy. Apparently not. And Rod gets in the car with you and he says, you know, Vinny, Italians are Jews. That's what Rod Rothstein says. Italians are basically Jews. I don't quite get that either. But... <laughs> I don't understand. Um, anyway, Matt, do the elderly have enough immune you. response to justify a fourth or fifth? Well, that's why Paul often says, don't keep boosting elderly, elderly people. Because you may have a transient induction of antibodies. You can make B cells, you can make T cells, but you can't make memory B and T cells. So there's no point in boosting over and over. Take, be ready with a plan with Paxlovid. Okay, that's it. That's it. Hmm. A new paper from Eddie Holmes on what infectious pathogens may make bats sick. Gamma retroviruses, novel viruses, and pathogenic bacteria in Australia and bats with neurological signs, pneumonia, and skin lesions. You know, Eddie Holmes was at the uh, conference in Manchester, and he gave a talk, and he showed a little video of a uh, flying fox that that was in his yard, and it was sick. It had some neurological symptoms. It was going, doing spasms, and it couldn't move, and I really felt bad for it, but he said, yeah, see, Horrible. bats get sick. Bats get sick. Every animal gets sick. So why are frequent restrictions, silent restriction sites a bad signal in the genome when compared with other genomes? So that's this bogus preprint, which says there are a lot of silent restriction sites, which means it's engineered compared to other DNAs. Why is it bogus, Amy? There's silent restriction sites in everything. Yeah, but they're claiming that it's higher frequency than in other genomes. To, no... be, to be honest, I can order 400 oligos and ligate them together and generate a polio virus. Well, Eckhard well, Wimmer, 2020. Wait, 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 Amy. That's what they're saying was done with SARS-CoV-2. Right, exactly. And I could do it with polio. So let's get real here. That's not a good, that's no, this is not a scientific origin. Rationale. This is the origin idea, Amy, the origin idea. It's crap. I just think it's a, a red herring because it's always a red herring. You could put nobody, as go ahead. You could put silent restriction sites. You can design oligos and genomes all you want, right? And you're never going to know if you have a silent restriction site because we haven't identified all the si- all the restriction sites, right? All the restriction enzymes. When you were a graduate student, you had BAM, BAM and ECO. Everything Bag- was Bam bagel. and Eco. Bagel one. Oh, Bam bagel and okay. I loved bagel Bam. one and two. My favorite enzyme. Actually, two was good. Bagel one was the sucky enzyme. I was gonna say, what planet are you on? That bagel one was good enzyme. Bagel one that sucky enzyme. Super sucky enzyme. Look at this, is cool. All I did was Google Mimi Circadian Rhythm and her site came up. Yeah, Google is good. Yeah. Yeah. You just need to know the right words to to cue on, right? And you get it. Yeah. So if you if you and if you Google Vincent virus, you will get me. Yes. If you Google Amy, you will not get me. I bet if I Google Amy virus, I will get you. Let's try it. Amy virus. Okay. Sure. Uh, let's see. Okay. The, uh, no. Okay. Let's move. There's on. a book called the Amy virus, but your your picture shows up in my lab. <laughs> my yeah. But okay, you're trumped good. by, um, and then enterovirus website is at the bottom of the first page. So there you go, Amy. It worked. You're trying to be negative, but it worked. It worked. Not, okay, it's fine. Let's move on. Uh, I saw that restriction enzyme nonsense on Twitter. Uh, Acapella Science was trying to talk some sense into someone. He says, "Good luck with that." Oh, this Don't is a good one. Twiddle. Don't Puck. waste your Twitter thingies. Pure unadulterated Puck? crap. I like that. I use Puck, Puck all the time. Did yeah, you know Puck I use Puck all the time? Yeah, Puck yeah, is a plasmid. Yeah. 
I use it all the time. Oh, Hilo, access to Kilauea, the volcano. Okay, so you go to Hilo to see the volcano. I don't know if we're going I've seen it already. I'm not sure I want to go again. Are you staying at the Mauna Kea? No, we're at the Hilton Waikoloa village. The Mauna Kea is up the road here. Is that where Pam is? No, she's at the Fairlight, which is also up the road. There are a lot of, there are a lot of resorts here. It's just too much. I don't know. I've never been. I'm not a resort kind of guy, okay? I mean, I appreciate the night's weather, but I don't know. I'd rather be in Amsterdam. I like Amsterdam. Never Actually, been. I'd rather be at the incubator. <laughs> I'm going to Paris. You are? Some point. Cool. Uh, if the full immune response to a particular vaccine takes weeks, would it really matter if the time of day you get the vaccination? Well, this is a great question. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I, I acknowledge your uh, critical That's view. That's why of you talked to Mimi. That's why you talk to Mimi. She knows the answer. Uh, so you think I should pitch her to come on and talk about circadian immune responses? Yeah, for sure. Ah, it's a good idea. I like Mimi. I think she's a good, good scientist. Yeah. Yeah. So it matter. Maybe it matters where the initial uptake of the antigen is. You know, and what you know when they go into lymph nodes, maybe time of day makes a difference. It's the only thing I can think of. But I, I agree that we should get Mimi on to talk about that. So um, uh, if anyone's doing the stickies, I know that it's a little problematic today. Put down Mimi uh, on uh, circadian immune responses. Uh, it, the current batch of variants reminds me of what happens with general genetic drift. Wouldn't a variant with true selective advantage be taking hold faster than we observe? I'm not sure. It's they, they do take over pretty quickly, right? Within ice, with it. Looking at another comment, ice bucket. Within um, months, they can dominate, right? So I'm not sure. I think it's they they can predominate pretty quickly, is what I am saying. But certainly, it is genetic drift followed by selection by immune pressure, right? Would you agree with that, Amy? Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth has a pitch for Lori. Twiv listeners love you and want to hear anything you'd like to talk about. I think it needs to be better. It it's really? not bad, but it needs, yeah, it needs a little work. Okay. But I like it. It's not bad. It's, yeah, it's good, but it just needs a little bit more work. You have to, you have to, you have to, um, feed into her her stuff it's not it's not specific enough well I, I will next week email her and say okay you had great response people are very excited many people called me and said they want to see more so what do you want to do can we do another episode what are you thinking i would say to her i think it's a great idea but i've already done that what would you like to do Lori? What's the most morbid human virus? So just that makes people ill, right? Got any ideas on that, Amy? Well, the virus that makes people the most ill is probably like rhino, right? But I wouldn't say it's morbid. Well, morbidity is just illness, right? Yeah, I guess. So what virus is the highest percentage of Morbidity, symptomatic well, infections, right? Probably rhinos, because there's over 160 different genotypes of them. And everybody gets at least one per year. Not not measles virus? Not everybody, not, not, we, not everybody gets measles. Now that we're no. vaccinated. Yeah, but if, if, if you look in the every... pre-vaccine days, you might make not, it Not Everybody got measles, but they didn't all get severe disease, right? Like encephalitis and deafness and various other things. I, you know, I'm thinking of smallpox pre-vaccine, right? It's really horrible. 30% fatality, yeah, but most people, you could get blindness, 
that horrible disfiguration of the skin. So, yeah, but how many people get smallpox? How well, many I'm talking about pre pre vaccine era, right? I think that's how the many way you have cases to look of, at this. right? But pre vaccine, how many cases of smallpox per year were us there? Uh, there were quite a few globally. Well, quite a few is not good enough. Well, I don't we have the book. It. I'm actually reading uh, D. A. Henderson's smallpox book, "The Death of a Virus," I think it's called, and uh, the numbers are there. It's pretty impressive. But I think measles and smallpox are big ones in terms of morbidity. Yeah. But I, I'll but tip I think, my hat to I rhinoviruses. Like, I, I was going to say, but saying. I think like, you know. I think what is most mean? I mean, is it the number of vi is it the number of infections per year, or is it the severity? Because if it's the number of infections by year, it's always going to be a rhinovirus. No, I most people get more than one, more than one per year. Yeah, but I just think it's symptoms, a fraction of people that get symptoms. You know. Well, almost everybody anyway. gets symptoms. So I think we could put we could put rhino and smallpox and measles. That's this is what the A and V crew has just concluded. Yeah, but then you know people would say, but like a certain individual doesn't think rhino is a pandemic. Well, the pandemic is another question entirely, Doctor Rosenfeld. You're muddying the waters. Oh, okay, muddying the waters. If Good thing you got Eddie Bauer shoes on. Good thing you got your lava climber shoes on. We want you, want you to get wet. Yeah, they're actually not my style, but they're, they're fine. I like my Rothies. Well, what, well what, wait, wait a minute. What, what, what do you wear when you la lava climb or volcano walk? I mean, you're not, not going to climb either out one. I'm not going to climb any lava. I'm not going to. I just walk you around. You just told us that, that there was lava all over the place. Yeah, the but hotel. I don't walk on it. I don't walk on it. Uh, if Paxlovid is a protease inhibitor, what does inhibiting protease exactly do? What does a protease do? Well, a protease cuts, cuts proteins. Protein. So you make a so long it protein have... and it cuts it to make the proteins that have different functions because they're all joined together to begin with. That's what a protease is. And so SARS-CoV-2 needs a protease to chop up its big proteins into smaller ones that have different jobs. So if you inhibit the protease, you don't chop it up, and the virus infection stops. Did I cover it all, Amy? Sure. So the sure word from Amy is suspicious. You know that. What did? What do you want to add? Come on. You don't want to add anything. It's good. Okay. So I'm sorry, Christine, that your husband had psych episode mixing Paxlovid with antidepressants. I'm not aware of that combination, but. I hope he's okay now. Talk to Daniel. Yeah, talk to that. Daniel. Um, if you want Daniel's thoughts, you could send an email to Daniel at microbe.tv and ask him if he's heard of that. That would be interesting. Our, our Rotary Club here has a fundraiser every year for polio. It was a pig roast this year. I'm oh, surprised cool. they still have a fundraiser for polio every year. It's good, no? Isn't that fine? Yeah, I think it's great. I like polio. I work on it, but I'm just surprised. <laughs> Overjoyed, loves Hawaii. Best macadamia nuts and pineapple. The air smelled like plumeria. The pineapple here is amazing, yeah. Um, and yeah, the macadamia nuts are good too. Do you ever have macadamia, Amy? Yeah. Probably not the right ones, but yeah, they're okay. I'm not a big so, pineapple fan. The science march I went to was. Uh, it was in January. It was, it was raining. raining. Yeah, it was not in January. Hot, right no, after it, it, it was right after Trump was elected in 2017. It was raining. Yeah, so I have photos of that. Um, what, so that was 2017. Yeah, yeah. Like let me January. show you. I show you a picture of me. Uh, what January? Yeah, chart on. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, I'm going to show you a yeah, picture which, which shows you. Oh, look at look what I found while scrolling through. 
Look who that is. That is me. It's That's me. December 2017. That. Well, we don't we don't want to look at that. We want to look at the science march um, in August, June, April. I'm getting there, folks. What did you say? February. February, January, somewhere around there. Uh, it was winter time. I have yeah. proof that it was rainy in Washington. That it was not hot at all. February first. This is very. I should just search for. I saw it yesterday. I should just search for Washington, D.C. No. Nope, not coming up. Sorry, it was raining. The island of Maui has one active volcano. So that's the island next to us. Uh, Heliakala, which has erupted at least 10 times in the past thousand years. Kilauea, the youngest and most active, is on the Isle of Hawaii. Yeah, Kilauea is here. It smokes. It's an interesting crater. Thanks, Les. What do you think about Hawaii? I like this island. It's very beautiful. I'm not a fan of uh, Oahu. Honolulu is like New York City on the Pacific. It's okay. But the, this is beautiful. To, you know, go, Depending on where you go on the island, you can have beach, you can have desert, you can have rainforest, you can have high-level climate. It's really remarkable. And some of the parts of the island are just gorgeous. Yes, it's a cool island. Those are the only two I've been to, so that's it. Why did the U.S. get rid of polio vaccine? Why not give IPV first and then OPV, Amy? So they got rid of OPV because there's a vaccine-associated paralytic disease. You then had people who initiated the idea. So originally when the eradication campaign was initiated in 1985 or 88, one of those two, it was just to eradicate the disease, but then it subsequently morphed into eradicating the virus too, which was kind of the mistake. So if you continued with OPV, you would keep reintroducing uh, virus into the environment, and then they decided not to do that. Hello, well, Snackums. Here's a picture from the Science March. You can see we're wearing raincoats, and it's all wet. Yeah, right? but there's the famous picture that Darius took of you. No, that was the picture taken by um, Chris Kandayan of me with my hands out, right? Yeah. I, I can't find that one. I don't want to spend time doing it. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah, so why not give IPV first? Did you answer that? Because Yeah, I did. We tried that for a year during the transition, but it's too complicated. Right. It's not too complicated. The problem is, is that the eradication campaign switched its focus. It was initially focused just on eradicating the disease. And then they decided like in the late nineties that they wanted to eradicate the virus. Also, if you give OPV, you have, you're reintroducing virus into the environment. They didn't want to do that. <laughs> Can we have additional tips for exceptional papers? Yeah, I, I think I think I can. With the addition of another person, I think I can get enough people to do to do that. So, well, the Angela lady, you're going to invite, right? Yeah, I'm going to invite Angela to join us. Um, thoughts on Harvard and Columbia studies of bivalent vaccine? Ho raised imprinting concern. So, I think. The bivalent vaccine preferentially gives you antibodies that neutralize ancestral virus, correct, Amy? Yes. Which would be imprinting, right? Yeah, but it still neutralizes the, all the other variants. So what's the problem? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, imprinting concern makes it sound like, you know, you're not making antibodies against the other and you're going to have a dengue situation and you're not. So let's move on. Okay. Do you think the elderly elderly can go in a sauna without a mask? I have a plan. I don't know. How many people are in a sauna? Could be a bunch. Where is the sauna with a bunch of elderly, elderly people? I'm sure they exist. <laughs> I say have a plan. 
Get ready with Paxlovid. Have a plan. Yeah, have a plan. But don't you think the sauna conditions are going to inactivate infectivity? Yeah, I would think so. That's why I was wondering where the sauna is. It's really hot. It's really hot and humid, no? I mean, I don't do sauna. No, I don't not do so hot tubs. They, I don't. It, it's hot, and then they pour water on the rocks. Snorkel bogs. Yeah. That's it. That's where we got our snorkels. That's cool. Here is Matt. He's here in uh, Hawaii, just a bit south of you above Kona in a little village area of Holualoa, much wetter than where you are, and it, very green and full of coffee trees. Cool. Yeah, the climate changes well, yeah, very why don't you here. go? To, why don't you go and get some coffee? You could go and bring me back some coffee. Maybe. Amy, there are fish places in southwest D.C. by the wharf if you want to get fish. Not to okay. eat. I wanted the tropical fish for fish. Never mind. Move on. Lisa, thank you for your con for your contribution to science communication. We appreciate it. Really love it. Why is TWIM audio only? Some of the participants don't want to be on video. There's a lot of press about recent RSV. What has prevented the development of an RSV vaccine? The disaster the vaccine that was first developed in the 60s. Yeah, it was a disaster. It caused worse disease in infants. And Barney Graham said it took 50 years to get over it. And so now people are working on it again. Yeah. Well, doesn't that sound familiar? It was a disaster with Flexner. It took 50 years for people to get over it. Yeah. Once yeah. again, we did not learn from Flexner. Oh, you know what? I read a paper today that says that they're going to use, they're going to make an intranasal IPV. This was somebody's oh, plan. Sakes. This is are we this just is regressing? Somebody's plan. What is going somebody's on? Somebody's plan was to make an intranasal IPV. And I almost sent it to you and Christian guy. Seriously? Uh, total disaster. Total disaster. George, thoughts on Novavax? It's fine. If you're worried about mRNA, myocarditis, which is very low frequency anyway, you could get Novavax. I think they're both good. They're both very good. Yeah, I said they're fine. I'm still on my internasal IPV. <laughs> Poo Poo is the Hawaiian name for an appetizer or starter. A good appetizer would be ahi sashimi. Yeah, that would be great. You know, the, the thing is, things are really expensive here. <laughs> I went to lunch at a per Peruvian restaurant called Cipriano's up the coast. You, okay, three so people, what, what 150 three bucks people. for three. What did you have? Three artichoke paninis and three drinks. Not a, two of the $150? Well, only, it's ridiculous, right? Wait a minute. So let me get this straight. Your artichoke panini was forty dollars. No, there were three of three artichoke paninis. Right, but if each person was fifty dollars, because you had the same thing, you're telling me an artichoke panini is like forty dollars. You know, I didn't look at the bill. That's what they told me. It was too expensive. But even at dinner, some of these resorts are ridiculous, and most of the local, many of the local restaurants have closed. So it's not easy. Oh, thank you, though. Panini. Poo poo. Poo poo. Artichoke panini, forty dollars. You better have some dab good artichokes. Both grandbabies currently have RSV. Four year old brought it in from preschool. How long will immunity last? Almost in your entire life. You very rarely get reinfected. Or, it's good. Yeah. It's good. Con I think Pachi. there's only one. Okay. I think yeah. there's only one serotype of. Artichoke. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, that's the local fish, con, conpachi. Kombucha is the fermented tea, right? Kombucha. I didn't mean to say. Doesn't kombucha. your kids drink that? No, it's in the fridge. I don't know who drinks it. Kanpachi. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Kanpachi. Yeah, I, I don't get. I'm, I, I'm good at viruses, folks. But it's always fun to do the do the side trips here, right? My six-year-old got RS virus last October on the fourth day back at school. 
the doctor put him on steroids and antibiotics. Excellent. No. Good planning. I mean, I you're like lucky that. you got okay because that's not the right that's not the right treatment. Hmm. Uh, my brother, who travels the world with Greenpeace, just had his fifth booster. It's the first one to make him feel woozy. Well, I don't think we um, should be getting so many boosters. I just don't think it's needed. So many people are asking about the picture behind you, Amy. Okay, you've probably noticed. Yes, what about my picture? What is it? Me? It's a photograph by a famous photographer, right? It's photographed by Herb Ritz, who is a famous fashion photographer. Yes. Amy is a, is a um, what would you say, you're a little avant-garde? I'm eclectic. The, you're eclectic. Now, Amy I'm would eclectic. not put that. I prefer the one below it, which is the Keith Haring, frankly. But uh, Amy, uh, does, she would never hang that in her office, okay? Let's put it that way. <laughs> Well, my office has other, my office has Jen's picture in it. Why would I take it? To, so why would I distract people from acknowledging Jen's beautiful EV68 picture that she spent all that time painting for me? That would be so mean and so rude. I would never do that. That's not right. Also, oh, you have Dixon's picture in your office, right? I have Dixon's picture. I have the neural network that you get, you brought me. I have my Legos. I have my EV68 particle. I have my little penguin from Japan. I have my Zika virus. I have my Ebola Zika virus magnets plus my Zika plate and my baboon from Dixon when he went to the, to the safari. FDA does more than read results of a trial. They get individual study subject records and recap the statistics. Yes. I gave it short shrift in my saying they read it. Yeah, I agree. Totally. And I know because Amy tells me these things, right, Amy? Yeah. Thank you, Kathy, for your uh, contribution to science communication. Really, really appreciate it. I believe often thought there might be lymph node competition for response in the bivalent vaccine between ancestral and BA4 or 5 components. Yeah, but I don't know if we have any evidence for that, right? No, we don't. Campbell makes over $4 million a year on YouTube? This is pathetic. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So I don't monetize here on YouTube because I, this is the only show where we take your uh, super chat because I don't believe when you're being taught something, you should have ads. I think that's ridiculous. And so he's not teaching people. He's just BSing. End of story. If he really wants to teach, turn off the ad monetization, John, but he's not going to do it. Okay, folks, that's my feeling. Uh, if uh, hypothetical, if scientists find bats and claim them as real source of COVID-2, would it be possible to determine if the bats have been inoculated with serial passage modified COV2 implanted there? I mean, this is just getting so wacko now, YZ. How could that happen? You're going to inoculate bats with a lab main virus? It's just absurd. We have, oh my gosh. Okay, uh, okay can we move on? Uh, this isn't worth any time. Why doesn't the U.S. have an interferon inducing drug like other countries? Because it's what really, interferon inducing drug do the other countries have? They know. give you LPS, poly IC. They just yeah. give you it to you as an inoculation. They inoculate you with poly IC. I think there are some agonists like TLR agonists that are used, but interferon has horrible side effects. You know, when people are given interferon, exactly. it sucks. So you don't want to do that. Yeah, I know. I knew somebody who took interferon before there were any drugs for oh. hep C. It made them suicidal. Okay, Rach, thank you. It's the Boston virus. It's your friend, Mo Mohid. What's his name, uh, Amy? Sahid? The guy yeah. Mas uh, no, it's Mohid Sa Sadi yeah. from Charlie's lab. Yes, he yeah. made the you know recombinant spike. Yeah, virus. I know what he made. But, but Campbell doesn't understand even what was done because... It couldn't get out and kill 40% of humans. It, well, first of all, the virus is already out 
it was yeah. made naturally like five months later and it, we don't see 40 40 of humanity dying so i don't know what he's talking i mean about. if john doesn't understand any virology he just wants to get money that's it uh Apparently frank, so, oh, if so frank is here thank nice to see you uh, my child had rsv last week sneezed and coughed everywhere all over myself and family. Nobody became sick within the household. Does one get immunity after RSV? Yes. Right, Mamie? You do get immunity? Yeah. Yeah, they want you to get the 3D printer and show us your work. Well, she just have it printed at a company, right, Amy? You're not going to do 3D printing yourself. No, but David has a 3D printer. Jonathan and David, they have a 3D printer. Yeah, maybe you could use it. But you could... You could have it 3D printed. Not, the company will do that for you, you know. Not worried about it anytime soon. We're not okay. doing it quite yet. If the bivalent doesn't work, those of us who got them are no longer protected. You know, you are protected because you had boosters beforehand. You had two doses. You had boosters. You're protected from those. You're all good. You're all good. Oh, look at uh, Maya Simone from Istanbul. Welcome. First time you're watching the live stream. Thank you for your support. We really appreciate it. Thank you so That's much. Great. Thank you, no, Doreen. She should go out throughout Istanbul and, and doing it. Love to reach many of these other countries where I, where I can't reach. Thanks, Doreen. Um, good to hear from you again. And thanks for your support of uh, science communication. I'm on the road for another week and a half. Well, I'm actually in New York on Monday, going to Mount Sinai to give a talk. And then uh, listen to this. I get in on the red eye Monday morning, and then I go to Mount Sinai for a 4.30 talk at an event. And then Tuesday, 6 a.m. flight to Seattle, I think. Whoa! I'll be tired. It's a lot of work. But these let you sleep on the plane. Yeah. Can you do an immune finding out how fruit and seeds fight infection? If they are over-chilled by the stores... They rot as soon as they warm up, but if they are still viable, they last ages. That sounds like a great idea. I don't know anything about it, of course, and maybe it's not immune. But if anyone's doing the, the stickies today, please write it down. Thank you. I think it's twin. I don't think it has anything to do with seeds and, and thing. I think it has to do with the molds and crop that grow on them. Thank you, Morris, for your support of science communication. Very nice. Um, just tuned in. I heard attenuated live vaccines have generalized benefits, for example, BCG, by focusing on the safety profile of RNA vaccines, uh, given given they are encoding protein. Are we foregoing the benefit in lieu of, so the adjuvant effect of live vaccines, are we foregoing it? What do you think about yes. that? Yes. Yeah, we you, are. you like the general benefit of live vaccines, Amy? Yeah. Yeah. It was just recently shown that antibodies against nucleic acid are important for something, but I forgot. Uh, what do we think of the Ebola Sudan vaccine using the surface integrated into VSV? I think it's great. The, the VSV Ebola vaccine... The um, ret the um, what's the other one? We got Sudan. I'm forgetting the, the Zaire. Uh, Zaire, the main one that that's been ma made a while ago, and that works well. So it's not surprising that this one is working as well too. Yeah. Kidoki. If there's cross reactivity between antibodies for various enteros. Why is bivalent OPV unable to provide immunity to BVPV2? It does provide. Well, so first of all, there is cross-reactivity, but doesn't mean that it's neutralizing, number one. some And they don't all form one antigenic group. There's multiple antigenic groups. Mm -hmm. And OPV bivalent, so there is a little bit of cross-reactivity between uh, serotypes of polio, but it is not sufficient to be give you enough pr to prevent to prevent mm -hmm. disease. 
It's not an nope. all or nothing thing. Right. Why is there no EBV antiviral? I, I don't know. That's a good question. Whether any of the other herpes Acyc antivirals. Yeah. Are, yeah. Acyclovir won't work against the EBV. I don't think so. I think the um, there's no TK, you know. Got it. So acyclovir and gancyclovir are ineffective clinically for EBV. Got it. Okay, it's time to wrap up. Five minutes. Yes, Rima, send me the name of a CMV person. That would be great. I was looking at reported monkeypox cases, two in Russia as of 1020. Are they underreporting or have a high level of smallpox vaccine? I don't know which of those two it is. I would not think they have a higher level than anybody else. I didn't think that they vaccinated against smallpox. I, I thought everybody that. stopped. I think they're I don't think reporting. This... Yeah. Wouldn't giving NOPV2 result in the same VDPV we we're dealing with? No. The point of NOPV2 is that stabilization of stem loop 5, where uh, it always reverts for VDVP. Um, and so it cannot revert there because you have to make three changes instead of one, and that probability is very low. Why don't we see Paxlovid resistance, Amy? We do, but it probably doesn't make a difference. It just occurs within the host of that particular infection. It doesn't spread. Isn't that what the guy from Emory said? Yeah. Um, do we have? Do I still have T cell memory from my first two vaccines? It yes. Depends if you're young. If you're less than seventy-ish, yeah. But if you're over seventy-five, you probably don't. How about shark viruses? I don't even know anybody who wear, who works on them. Somebody in an aquarium. Uh, do you have a favorite cashmere brand which wears well and does not pill easily? I do. I like Remember? Luna. I like Luna Pin. Very Luna? expensive Italian cashmere. Luna pins. Hello. I think it's L O A N, and then it's just another, the second name starts with a P. It's very expensive Italian cashmere. But I also like Max Mara and stuff. They don't pill. I don't buy cashmere at the local Macy's. <laughs> oh, I Not said, so Renzo said in the book, he quotes, it is no wonder that virologist VR has called viruses simple Darwinian machines. Oh, that's a good quote. They are simple Darwinian machines. Yeah. Okay, you have a minute and a half. Start <laughs> scrolling through. Yes, ma'am. I know you want to eat dinner. I'm going to scroll through and look for the uh, our, our donuts. Well, I stupidly <laughs> left the sliding glass door open because I was still hot from when I came in running and now I'm freezing cold. Sorry. I, want to close uh, I tuned it's in okay. and wondered whether TWIV will, or related broadcasts will have Dr. Funk debunk Dan Wilson on. Yes, we're planning to do that. We are planning. See, every week, that. every week, every week. Oh, this is a good t Every week. I'd rather be at the incubator. I really like that. You know, but the people don't know what it is, though. But I, I do like that. Great job. What's it, what's the difference between a protease and a peptidase, Amy? Uh, the size of the protein. So a peptidase is smaller than a protease. Elena went to the Science March in New York. So you must have heard me talk, right? Because I talked with Lori Garrett. Did you hear me? I heard you. Did you hear me? You got 60 no. seconds now less. I'm talking to Elena. Earth Day. It wasn't Earth Day. It was Science March Day. You know, I'm scrolling day. through to find the donors. And I see interesting questions. I can't resist. Yeah, oh, there's thank always you, James. going to be interesting questions. <laughs> thank you, you got to learn how. All right. Thank you, James, for your contribution. 
to science communication. We really appreciate it. All right, that'll do it for this on the road episode of Q and A with A and V. I want to thank our moderators, Les, Frank, Tom, Vanity Nutrition. Only missing uh, Steph tonight. Thank you all so much for joining us as usual we will not be back next week okay so so note that and amy thank you very much for joining me tonight thank you thank you i'm sorry I'm you're cold i'm Hawaii. sorry you're starving but um we will let you go momentarily thank you all for coming all 430 of you thank you for your contributions and if you had questions that weren't answered Bring them back in two weeks, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Two weeks from tonight, we'll be back. In the meantime, thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night.